Okay. Uh, hey, I want to give you an update on what I'm doing with the ADR 1000 on the transmit side. So I've posted a couple of videos uh, on the receive side doing monopulse tracking and stuff. Uh, and now um, I want to show you my setup. It's an eight element transmitter using two ADR 1000 boards from X microwave. We're going to transmit a signal uh, through Pluto to those. We're going to receive it on a separate setup. That's a four element uh, receiver array. And uh, we're going to receive that into the same Pluto. Then we're going to use the, uh, a quick systems program called quick transceiver to uh, both transmit uh, um, a pattern, you know, BPSK, QPSK, QAM, could be LTE, could be 802.11. We're going to transmit that pattern. Uh, we're going to receive it uh, from that other uh, four element array. And then uh, we're going to look at EVM and, and see what impacts EVM and the constellations and stuff for, uh, for these little beam formers. Just a quick example. It's not meant to be a performance example of, of how to get the best EVM or anything. This is just a, just a quick kind of, kind of proof of concept video just to update you on, on where I'm at with that and, and what I'm doing. All right, so this is, uh, this is what my setup looks like right here. This is a little webcam setup. We're, we're live, hello, hello. Um, so here um, is my X microwave board. The board has two ADR1000 modules on it and each ADR1000 um, board has four ADTR1107 modules. These are P integrated PA, LNA and, and switches. So these are all configured for transmit right now just via software. And then in the middle, I have an ADF4371. Uh, it's a 32 gig synth synthesizer. I've set it to 9.5 gigahertz. That gets um, distributed to, to the LO of these two mixers, the LTC5553 mixers on either side. And then uh, feeding the, uh, the IF port of those mixers is the transmit from Pluto. So the transmit from Pluto um, uh, gets split into both of these channels here. And it's this cable here, and it comes around to this little Pluto device. So um, I'm transmitting um, there, and then um, and then I'm receiving Pluto from from this setup over here. I could have used two separate Pluto devices, but that would have complicated my setup a little bit. And so I did things the easiest way that I could, uh, which is thusly. So on this bench over here, I've got uh, my receive setup. Let me zoom in on that. So on my receive setup, it's a, it's a four element receive array. It's connected to one ADR1000 evaluation board. So there's no LNA um, on, on this side. It's just the ADR1000 eval board. That's controlled by Raspberry Pi um, and the, the LO to this mixer board, which is again, the LTC5553. That uh, LO is controlled by an ADF5356 eval board. So this setup is a little bit more clunky, even though it's only four channels, just because I, I'm not using the, the X microwave kit for, for the receive side. Um, I do have another Pluto here though, that's just to measure the, the receive response. Um, so in a, again, that was done basically to make my setup slightly easier for me um, in, a, in a real setup, of course, the one Pluto that I showed you before would be would also give me the, um, the, signal, the signal response amplitude. Anyway, this, this was just slightly easier to, to set it up this way, um, but, the, but the concept is the same, and that's all I'm trying to do here today is just, just demonstrate the concept of transmitter beam forming and then um, receive beam forming and put it together, sending through a, a, a real modulated uh, signal, uh, demodulating that, looking at the constellation and measuring EVM. Okay, so that is my setup. So, and right now I've aligned both the antennas so that they're basically pointed at each other. This is my transmit program here. It's a GUI with GNU radio. And um, and in this GUI, I can adjust the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the phase shift of my eight elements here. And I can also adjust the gain of the eight elements here. So since I'm pointing at zero degrees, I'm just gonna leave my, my phase shift from the transmit side at zero degrees. And uh, we go over here to the receive side. And start this guy up. Uh, so on the receive side, this is the um, this is what the the receive antenna is seen from my from my transmitter here. Uh, 
And as I, as I steer the beam on the transmitter, the eight element transmitter, you could, you'll see the amplitude uh, fall and then rise a little bit as we see all the, the, the side lobes and stuff of the, uh, of the eight element transmitter pattern. And uh, I can shift the beam back and forth. And ideally, you know, I, I'll, I, I'll know when I'm at the right point to steer the beam when um, that receive amplitude is at the maximum. So I can kind of move this guy around. It should be around zero degrees. I, I don't know that I have them exactly pointed, you know, uh, at the right angle, but it's uh, it's somewhere around a zero degrees phase shift, which corresponds to a zero degree zero degrees steering angle. Um, okay, so uh, before I, before I send a modulated signal through Pluto, let me first uh, shape my beam a little bit and kind of kind of make some adjustments to to kind of clean these things up. From our you know, previous experience on the eight element and four element received beams, we know that tapering um, has a big deal. Uh, you know, it has a big impact. I don't have um, a picture of what the eight element transmit array looks like, but I know that I'll need to put some kind of a, of a taper on it. So if I go over here to gain, and if I just make up some taper that I apply, um, Probably could have calculated this in advance and gotten something a little cleaner, but some something kind of like this is generally knocks down a lot of the side lobes. And then uh, on the receive side, I can also do I can also do a little, little taper. Of course, on the receive side, I only have four elements, so there's there's not a ton I can do for tapering. But, but as I move these guys around, now I can actually see uh, what those side lobe levels are looking like. So I'm trying to get just enough taper to squash the side lobes, but not um, widen the beam and decrease the amplitude too much. Okay, so something like that is probably good. These should probably be equal. Okay, so the gain arcs one is 42 out of 127. The two inner elements are 127, and, uh, and then the outer element is just the same as the other outer element. Okay, so that's what my receive beam looks like. It's centered at zero degrees. Uh, so that's right because I'm, uh, I'm kind of facing zero degrees. I can uh, right now I'm I'm continuously sweeping, but I can also set it to a to just a static phase, and then as I as I move this phase around, you can see sometimes the amplitude response is very low, and uh, some, of course at zero degrees it's the highest, and if we had side lobes we would see those start to pop up around here somewhere too. All right, so that's a little bit of beam shaping uh, just to just to get things set up properly. And uh, let us go now into the quick transceiver program, which we'll use to to generate uh, a signal to, to send through through Pluto, and then also receive that signal. Okay, here's my quick transceiver program. Uh, let me arrange my windows a little bit here. Uh, I've got a lot of windows open now. Okay, so you can kind of just see now that the antennas are, are pointed still at zero degrees toward each other. Quick transceiver is very easy to use. Go to quicksystems.com, you can download it. It works with all of our analog devices transceivers. Just go to connection, uh, we find our Pluto, apply. We pick a signal to transmit. So I'm going to pick a BPSK signal. We can also make our own signals with Quick Generator, but so I'm just going to do BPSK. BPSK is obviously the most forgiving, uh, you know, of all the patterns that we could choose. And then after BPSK, we can do QPSK, we can do APSK, we can do 16 QAM, uh, all that kind of stuff. And we'll get pro progressively harder um, and and see how see how the system responds. Okay, so there's our, our BPSK signal. You can see it fluctuating up and down, and that's because we're still uh, sweeping the receive beam, and so it's going back and forth and everything. Uh, it's going through all its various phase states in order to give us this nice plot. That's not what we want to do. We want to lock the receive beam in at some some level. And as I sweep this beam here, you, uh, you can see the, um, the receive spectrum should also kind of rise and fall, just as it does in our plot window here. And of course, you'll see the that that carry to noise value change uh, over here. Right now, we're at 47 dB. That's uh, that's very good. 
There's also an EVM number that's calculated here. I want to emphasize that this setup, setup is made solely for my convenience. There has been no effort at all by me to do smart frequency planning or filtering. There's no filtering here on this. This is just a proof of concept vehicle just to uh, uh, demonstrate what's happening here. Uh, these EVM numbers, you can do far, far better than this. There's been zero thought by myself in terms of uh, good wireless engineering setup here. Okay, but you can see that I'm receiving a signal here. Um, this is not terribly interesting because I'm at zero degrees and zero degrees, and that doesn't give me an opportunity to show how to, how to steer my transmit uh, beams or anything. So uh, let me uh, let me go ahead and uh, uh, kind of move these beams around a little bit. I'm gonna let's steer this guy here off off to some kind of offset. That's maybe around 30 degrees, kind of offset there. Let me slide this guy over here. Give him a little bit of a little bit of a horizontal offset. So now my so now my receive beam is kind of shifted a little bit. All right, uh, so that's my new setup there. Transmit beam is, is, is offset maybe 30 degrees or so, and my receive beam is kind of um, a little bit shifted over to the right from this uh, center line axis here. And now that we've done that, we'll try to re-steer the beam to, uh, to get this guy cent centered back up here. Let's go ahead and sweep so that we can see a little bit better what we're doing. Uh, here's my transmitter phase shift. Now I'm just gonna move my transmitter phase shift around such that I get the peak response uh, uh, here in this curve. So. That's too far. Okay, seemed like something right about in here. All right, that seems to give me my, my peak response. Um, and now I can see that I'm also at a steering angle here of about, about 10 degrees off on the receive side will give me a little bit better response. So let me, um, that's the steering angle, not the phase shift. So let me adjust the phase shift to find that steering angle. Okay, so now we've re-steered our beam for our, our modified setup there. Uh, we've steered our receive beam, we steered our transmit beam to kind of find that BPSK signal again that we're transmitting. And so now you can see, you know, it's okay. Obviously you can see the two points in the BPSK constellation. Um, probably a different pattern though. So stop BPSK and let's do 8PSK. Okay, now there's, there's eight PSK that's coming through. You can uh, clearly see the points in the constellation. Uh, there's, pro there's some um, optimization I'm sure that we could do. Um, to try to dial this in a little bit, play around with the, uh, uh, the transmit and receive amplitudes. So I'm just trying out some different numbers just to kind of show you the impact there. And now you can see our, our clouds getting much bigger on the constellation. Let's just kind of, kind of play around with it. Much bigger there. All right, where I had it set it seemed pretty good. Uh, we can also um, kind of dial in a little bit more. Uh, our steering angles too, based on this EVM number. So I can track this EVM number here and I can, uh, I can slide these guys back and forth a little bit and see if I'm steering things better or worse. Looks like things are getting a little bit worse there. Fairly flat. Yep, things are definitely getting worse now, worse and worse. 
I steer back the other way. And again, my EVM number now is starting to go down again. So, you know, with a four element array, I have quite a bit of, of freedom in exactly how to dial in the steering because the beam width is, is so wide. So I think something like this was about the, about the largest I saw. And then, um, so that was steering the, steering the receive side and then I could steer the transmit side too and see if I can get anything just a little bit better. Ooh, much worse. Now the transmit side has an eight element array, so it's a more, much narrower beam. So it's a little bit more sensitive to the steering angle. And in fact, if I, if I dial it down a little bit, you can see now my, my EVM is about 25 uh, dB. Constellation's getting a little bit more, more squished. Let's see here. Anyway, uh, we can keep playing with that. Uh, let's try another constellation here. QPSK. All right, there's my QPSK. Starting to get a few, a little bit of shoulders there. All right, uh, let's see what's after QPSK. Dare I do 16 qualm? 16 qualm is gonna be a little bit more sensitive to these clouds of dots, but let's give it a try. Oh, look at that, oh my goodness. Uh, again, let me, I cannot emphasize enough how little thought was put into the frequency plan and the filtering and the stages here. This is just a proof of concept to establish a wireless link using various modulation patterns, uh, using quick transceiver. All of these modulation patterns that I'm using to generate were, were done in quick generator, which is just the, the, the transmit side of this program that I can load load up these modulations into Pluto or into the ADRV 9009 or, or, or AD9371. Uh, any of our transceivers and we can we can play around with that okay that's it i hope that was an interesting kind of look and overview of doing an eight element transmit array and a four element receive array and transmitting and receiving a communications signal that's it